Uh, this here is another uh, common problem. Gonna make this video kind of quick, hopefully this time. For real, this time. But uh, this is a uh, Y main board out of a Samsung Plasma. Uh, yeah, one of the one of the real ones, right? <laughs> Made probably around 2008, 2009, I would believe. Um, it's the model number of the, the uh, actual television is a HP dash five zero five three. Um, slash X slash XXA, you know the rest, right? And uh, the part number, uh, what's, what happens What happens with the set is the set, uh, it does come on when you power it up. Of course, there's no picture, but it does come on. And when you go to check your v, VS and, VF, v, and VA voltages, uh, they are present, okay? And they, and they do say there, but unfortunately, there's no picture on the screen. The screen does not flash, and you still may have sound. Uh, so our first thing that we're going to check and the uh, well, the part number of this board, first of all, is an LJ92-014 36A. It also has a slash. Um, zoom in on that a little bit there. That's the part number, obviously. Stick right there on the board. Uh, slash uh, 01391B, looks like Bravo. Okay, and so basically what goes wrong with these uh, boards is a common failure is uh, same thing. Uh, well, first of all, on any plasma TV, if you're getting that problem with the TV comes on, uh, you may have sound but no picture, but there's, like I said, there's no picture, it's just black screen, uh, it doesn't flash or anything like that. And, you're, and, you, and you do have VS and VA. Uh, the first thing to do in any board, if you don't see anything, you know, offhand, if, if you, you know, don't see anything busted open or, or shorted, is just go ahead and replace the Y main board, okay? That's the first thing I always do, because um, unfortunately you can't really, like, because they use the different grounds for the buffers and things like that, you can't really, like, go in detail as far, well, I can't anyway, as uh, far as troubleshooting, and, uh... <laughs> Also, see, I got some bad caps on here. Also, so so first of all, let's do a visual inspection, and we and first of all, we see we do have some bad caps, but most likely um, that's not really our main problem here. I know for a fact uh, it may have caused that problem. Um, if we go up, for the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to check our fuses right here. Fuse is good. Okay, if the fuse is open, just. You know, double check each side, make sure the VS pin is not shorted. As you can see, this is labeled here. Um, as you can see, it's labeled VS ground, uh, V set, V scan, uh, VCC, which is like 15 volts, I think, that it needs. And, uh, but main thing is your uh, VS. Check that. If it's not present, uh, you may have a power supply board problem, most likely because that that plug is coming from the power supply board. But the main thing on these sets, uh, common case history problem, uh, is these Zener diodes located here on the actual plug going to the top buffer board or the upper buffer board, and down here these set of um, four in your diodes, it looks like a regular diode right here. Uh, they short out, okay, they're shorted. And I'm just gonna double check that, I'm just gonna confirm that for you. Okay. If we go at the bottom here. These are good. Okay. And these are 
shorted. Okay, so we're just gonna pull those off. With our heat gun. These top, I'm gonna pull all three of those top ones off. So we can get, we can get a good view here. Put our heat gun at about 300. Okay. And I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm only going to pull the Zener diodes off um, because the other one is just reading short because it's, I think it's in parallel with it. With it. Fairly easy. Okay, uh, I've got those diodes off of there. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do is going those are just so you know those are 36 volt Zener diodes, uh, one watt Zener diodes. Okay, there's like a, I don't know, 130 volts going across each line here. And uh, I just got one, actually just want to purchase some um, regular 36 volt diodes, uh, bigger ones. I didn't get the surface mount ones. I'm just going to cut the leads off, make them shorter. Here's how good your eyes are. You can make them as short as you want. Um... Me personally, I like to leave a little on there just so I can have a little uh, central center of gravity when I'm trying to hold it on there, right? So, um, I'm going to replace all four. I didn't bother to check each individual one. I know there's because the short is actually gone now. Now, um, just so you know, uh, this diode right here uh, is actually supposed to read short uh, because it is definitely in parallel with this resistor. Okay, as you can see, we'll go to the, um, I guess this is the anode side here. And that is reading short there. And we go down here, as you can see, it's coming across, coming across here, going across this jumper wire, which is supposed to be a fuse, I guess, on, on certain boards. And that is connected right here. Okay, and so therefore, don't worry about that on both sides. Yeah, they, it's going. It's going to read 3.8 ohms. Uh, these are like 15 ohm resistors, and there's four, and they're all in uh, parallel. So, but uh, anyway, uh, as you can see, the side is marked. That is the um, anode side. Um, please excuse me if I'm if I'm getting the anode and the cathode mixed up. But that is the banded side 
of your dial. That's where it goes. And all I'm going to do here, this is how I do it. I know some people may have different ways of doing this. I'm just going to um, you can see me doing this here. I'm just gonna put some solder on each one of these little pins here. Start with the first one. Get my leads as close as I can. I'm just gonna hold it on there like so. Voila, that's one. I'm just bending my little leads there so I can get a little more closer in there. Okay, if you want, you can hold down with the needle nose pliers. Make sure that we have our bands, uh, the polarity right on the diode or the anode and cathode. I'm gonna put a little solder on this here. Actually, I'm gonna put my camera around here so maybe you can see a little bit better. Follow me now. <laughs> okay, put a little solder here on each one. Okay, and uh, same thing with the other ones. My needle nose pliers here and just kind of just want to have to clean my tip here. But uh, I believe by now you guys should get the picture. You should replace those diodes and remember to the uh, stripe side, the white side here uh, is the stripe side or the uh, anode side, I believe that's, that's called here, the stripe side. And just make sure you do that. That's it. I'm going to replace those two capacitors. Uh, those capacitors uh, were 47, I'm sorry, 600 and uh 680 at 25 volts those two capacitors i'm sorry that were swollen right there looks like a c 
5034 and C 5000 and uh, that's pretty much about it guys place those and then you should be all set to uh, work in uh, Samsung Plasma TV thanks for watching please subscribe and I'll see you on the next video It is during playoff time every year. These people wait to the last minute. TV been broke for two, three months. Calling me, rushing me. TV fix, extra TV, need the TV, need the TV. Playoffs coming up. Yeah, I know the playoffs coming up. Well, shit. Who the fuck else? I mean, shit, you're the only one, you're the only one trying to get your shit ready for the playoffs. Well, guess what? I got so many TVs in here, I'm about to pull your board out and fix it and bring it back to you. And you better hope that shit work before the playoffs start, okay? That's what I'll, that's all I'm saying. <laughs>